so today we'll be looking at displacement time graphs, or I guess they're really a position time graph. Um, if you see dt or pt, they are the same. They are one and the same. dt and pt are one and the same. Position time, displacement time graph. I guess on a more to be to be absolutely 100 percent correct, I think they're referred to as a position time graph. So I even call them dt graph. We're going to find displacement. We're going to find average velocity. Now I believe. Many of you will have done this in grade 10 science already, so this should be reviewed, but it's sort of like the tail end, the very sort of last thing you do in grade 10. So you may not have gotten that far, maybe you didn't understand it or whatever. So this is sort of halfway between review and new stuff. Okay, so let's begin. In order to illustrate the concepts of position and displacement, we're going to use a locomotive a train moving back and forth in front of the station as it shunts rail cars. So it's moving these um, rail cars back and forth. Remember the track is straight. Train station is our reference point or our frame of reference or our origin for analyzing the motion of the locomotive. Ladies, are you with me? Back to F. As we stand in the station, we notice that the locomotive is 50 meters to our left. Sometime later, it's right in front of us. So later, it's 40 meters to right. And later still, it's located 10 meters to our left. We could draw a diagram to represent the various point locations of the locomotive as they are measured from a reference point at the station. So uh, here, here's zero, here's the station. Right there, I'll just circle it, just to sort of highlight it. And position one is at minus 50, so it's 50 meters to the left. Then it moves forward to zero, then it moves forward to plus 40, and then it goes backwards to minus 10. Just random sort of arbitrary motions. If we were to analyze the motion of the locomotive, we would need to know its change in position as it moves back and forth in front of the train station. Anytime there is a change in position of an object, we say that it has undergone displacement. <laughs> Emphasis. Displacement. Hint. Verbal cue. Displacement. Is a change in position. Displacement is a change in position. So displacement is a change in position. To determine any change in position, we would subtract where we started from, from where we ended up. Subtract where we started from, from where we ended up. Displacement is delta x, sometimes, sometimes, Delta D, in fact, more often than not, it's delta D, is XF minus XI. What does XF minus XI stand for? Exactly. Final position minus initial position. Now, for a long time, I caught vector subtraction with that, and it caused a lot of grief. All my hair fell out. Okay, so I switched it up. And I think I made it easier. But, anyways. Final minus initial. Is it always final first? Yes. And I only use always when I mean always. Always. Final minus initial. The symbol delta, the triangle, is a much used symbol in physics, which indicates a change in across the universe. Well, you not universe. Across the globe, the little triangle, the Greek letter D, the delta, stands for change. Now, I often wonder, and when I get to this point in the course, I often say to students, I wonder if there's some class in Greece right now learning about this. What do they use for the Greek letter D? Because all the other text is in Greek. How do they differentiate? Do they use the English D? I don't know. When they write delta D, <coughs> when they write this, do they write that? I don't know. I was in Greece a while back. I really want, I was looking for teenagers to ask, but my wife wouldn't let me because she thought it was weird. I've tried. I can't find it out. <laughs> Say again? Yeah. I just don't know what they use for the what we call the English letter. I don't know. Anyways. The triangle sign stands for change. Uh, indicates a change to something um, and always subtracts the initial from the, from the final. The displacement of the locomotive for the first interval can now be calculated. So let's go back. You'll notice that there's a clicker question, so I'm going to ask you to do this right away. So here's the example, right? So delta x for the first one. Now, I have to go back here. So, and we can just count. Like, I know you can always count, okay? That's not the point here. I don't care about the answer. I care about showing you how to do it properly, okay? 
So from x1 to x2 is obviously 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's plus 50, right? 50 to the right. How do you get it mathematically? How do we learn the process? We're going to go x2 minus x1. That's the first interval. So it's going to be 0 minus minus 50. And I purposely picked this minus 50 so that you can be reminded when we go 0 minus minus 50, the displacement is plus 50. 50 to the right. Um, okay, so does everyone understand plus 50? How to, how to do it? What am I going to ask you to do next? I'm going to go, I'm going to ask you to do x2 to x3. So you need to be able to like know how to do it, right? I'm going to press start here. So you need to do interval 2, which is from x2 to x3. Entering the number, x interval 3, I think you just those two of them, right? Yeah. Yes, this one doesn't start. Okay, so you guys go ahead and do those two questions. I'm going to go do my attempts. Did it start? Is it running right now? Yeah. It says 2? Okay, I think I might have hit the wrong one. Yes, I did. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Okay, let's go back. Okay, should go back to question one. Okay. Okay, so what'd you get? Minus 50. Minus 50. No. How do we do it? The final minus initial. Final is minus 10. Initial is plus 40, so it's going to be final minus initial, minus 10, minus 40, or minus 50. 50 to the left. Okay. Okay, so there's sort of the sample ones. This says state the displacement for each of the following change in position. You guys, how many do you have on the outside there? Five. Okay, so the, oh, there's six actually. The sixth one, you have to, it's kind of a multiple choice kind of thing. Okay? So I will put, I will start this. You'll have to follow along on the paper. It is clicker. I will put up number six on the screen so you can see it. Always, 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 final minus initial. Give her. Okay, let's go through them. I purposely put negatives here. Final minus initial. Okay, check and see if you got it. Final minus initial. Minus 2, subtract minus 8. Minus 2, subtract minus 8, which is minus 2 plus 8, which is plus 6. <laughs> 2 to minus 8. Minus 8, subtract 2. You guys don't need calculators for this. You really don't. Trust yourself. Just think. Minus 10. Yes, yeah, so you guys have done mental math before, right? 0 to 8. 8 minus 0. Minus 8 to 20. 20, subtract... Minus 8, or plus 28. Minus 8, sorry, 8 to minus 8. Minus 8, subtract 8, or minus 16. How do we do? We did not too bad. What's the answer for the multiple choice one? Hey, everyone, yeah, everyone got this one, right? Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, I didn't do that on purpose. Wait, what did, did I? Do? I didn't mean. I just randomly picked. No, I honestly did not know the answers. I don't go by that, you guys. I honestly just went. I don't know and just picked one to explain. What were the What were the intervals? This would be plus three, minus nine, plus three, negative three, plus two. Negative 3 and negative 5, right? So the only ones that are up there are A and C, which is B. I got two of those wrong. A? Plus 5. Thank you. Okay. So 
That is the general idea about the slices. Now we're going to take it to the next step. See how it builds, right? That's why it's so important to say, you know, be here on time and sort of be focused right from the start because it's building, building. Displacement from a position time graph. Knowing the position of an object tells us something about the motion of that object, but it would be helpful to know the length of time it takes to undergo the displacement. Displacement and time can both be illustrated on the, at the same time on a position time graph. The position time graph is capable of providing us with information about displacement, average velocity, and instantaneous velocity. These three calculations will be performed using the sample position time graph shown below. Okay, so the first one, displacement. Displacement is determined on a position time graph using the standard formula that you just learned. Final minus initial. The final and initial positions are located on the vertical axis. Where is the vertical axis? Right there, right? What does it say right there? It says position. If you desire, a dotted line can be drawn from the graph to the position coordinate in order to easily identify the two positions. In other words, you can draw a cross like this if you want. You don't need to. Okay? In the example graph for time interval A, I'm going to do interval A, and then guess what? You're going to do B and C and D and E. So don't ask when I get you to do B. How do I do this? I'm telling you right now. Here's how to do it. Interval A. Let's look more closely at it. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Okay, and here. Here's interval A. It's from zero. Each tick mark, that's one, two, three, four, five. Each one is one second. So where is the final position for A? Negative six. Colin says negative six. The interval A is this one right here. Positive six. How do we get positive six? We look at the graph. We read from the graph just like I taught you in unit one. Read from the graph. So plus 6, the initial position was 0. zero. So we have 6 minus 0. The, the displacement is 6 for interval A. For interval A. Guess what you're going to do next? B, C, D, and E. Okay, well, look up here because I always have kids say, what's interval B? Interval B is this one. See it? It's highlighted. For every change, right, there's B, there's C, there's D, there's E, and there's F. Go. Okay. Let me just go through this one last time, because the next step where we do average velocity, you have to be able to do this. You can't not get this before we move on. Okay, so if you're still not sure what's going on, watch really, really close. Interval B is from 2 to 6 seconds. It's just referring to, it's just referring to this interval. Okay, so you read off the graph. The final position is right here. Right, six seconds. So what's the what's the position at six seconds? It's plus six. Right? What's the position at the start of the interval? Also plus six. So it's six minus six, which is yeah. Did it move? No, it stayed in. Remember, flat means flat means stopped. Flat means stopped. Interval C is this one here. What's the final position? Minus 10. The final is minus 10. The initial is plus 6. Minus 10 minus plus 6 is minus 16. Remember, down is negative. Right? Interval D, also flat. Do we need to do any subtraction? Displacement is? Zero. Flat means zero. Interval E is this really steep one right here. It's up. It's going to be positive. What's the final position? Mm, looks like it's above one, right? So it's going to be minus four. Is it not? Final minus initial. So minus four, subtract minus ten is minus four plus ten, which is plus six. Plus six is the answer. 
Interval F is this one here. Final minus initial. The final is zero. The initial is minus four. When you subtract, Colin, you get plus four. Okay, we're finding the displacements. Okay, last little bit here. Hang on. Yeah, I know it's a big lesson. Hang in there. Now determine the average velocity for each interval. Okay? We're doing the last one. The average velocity. Velocity is displacement over time. How do we find the displacement? We just did it. Final minus initial. And then you divide by the time it took to do it. So again, I'm going to do interval A, and then you're going to do the others. What was the displacement for interval A? Six. The displacement for interval A is six. How do I know? Six minus zero over the time, which was two seconds. And I'll point that out that it's two minus zero. Six minus two, or six divided by two is three meters per second. This is, in fact, the slope. You are finding the slope. The slope is the average velocity. The slope is the average velocity. Now you go ahead and find average velocity and punch them into your clicker for intervals B, C, D, E, and F. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Now keep in mind, you should have the displacements already. There is one final question here that's not on your sheet. Yeah, your correct answers. Okay. Okay, so let's go. Yeah. So I have to do inter I have to do question number one first, right? Yeah. Okay. So it shouldn't take too long because what's the displacement for interval B? And what do you get when you take zero divided by any random number you can come up with? So the answer is? And so the answer is zero divided by the time. Please do not get your calculator out to go zero divided by six because the answer is? Oh, it's four, yeah. You're right, it's four. Okay, but the answer is still zero. Guess you had your number. <laughs> Please tell me everyone got this right. I'm afraid. Yes, I'm a good teacher. I give you the answer. Try number, I guess it's interval C. Okay, what'd you get for C? You should have got minus four. How do you get minus four? Remember, it's displacement over time. The displacement is minus 10 subtract six. All over the time, which is 10 minus 6. I realize those numbers are kind of similar. Minus 16 over 4. The slope of the line is minus 4 meters per second. The slope of the line is minus 4. That's why we learn how to do slope in grade 9 or wherever it is. Grade 10? Okay. This one here. This one should take all of about three seconds to answer. Okay, interval D, what is the shape? Interval D is flat. What does flat mean? 
Stop, which means what kind of speed? You had to do the one for D? If it's stop, that means the velocity is? Zero. I don't even need to calculate because it's flat. Flat means stopped, which means zero. Okay, interval E is positive. You're finding the slope. You're finding the slope again. Logan got an answer? You can go on, you guys. You can go if you're ready. You can go on. I'm just waiting here for Logan. Well, you can like calculate them, right? Correct answer is six. Why is it six? What's the displacement? It goes from again. Watch. If you're not getting this, watch. I'll come by and I'll help you in a bit. The displacement is final minus initial. The final is minus four. Subtract minus ten, which is a total displacement of plus six in how much time? 12, 13, it's from 13 to 14. So 14 minus 13 over 1. 6 over 1, the slope is 6. Okay, last one. Last one. It's not really a race, you guys. Is this going to be a positive value? Yeah. How can I tell? Slope is positive. <laughs> Answer, Danielle. <laughs> Why is the answer one? What's the final position? Zero. Minus, minus 4. 0 minus minus 4 is a displacement of 4. It's up 4. How much time? The final time was 17. 17 minus 13, which is 4. 4 over 4 is 1 meter per second. Okay, last question. Yes or no? True or false? Given the position time graph below, determine if this represents a real life situation. Is this possible? Is this possible? Wait, how do you. True or false, yes or no? Is this, does this represent a real life situation? No. Why no? Can't go back in time. Or, Colin, give me 30 more seconds. You can't be at the same position, or sorry, at two different positions at the same time. Okay? How many people have done our uh, pre calc math where you've talked about the vertical line test? Yes. Vertical line. Does this pass the vertical line test? No. It's not a function. 
Right? Position is a function of time. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't run away. Don't back up. I got, I got time for two more minutes. Don't run away, don't back up. Hang on, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. We're running out of time. Okay, you will notice at the back, okay, I realize there's not a lot of time left in class. There are, I need 30 seconds so you understand. Colin, 30 seconds, please. There are two practice problems. They are for you to Practice, okay? I will gladly help you with practice. I will help with practice. I have provided answers as a uh, form of help. I have provided a QR code and a link to solutions as a form of help. I will gladly talk to you about these as well. Okay? I have a new rule. You don't get a pretest until I've seen a minimum of the ones that I'm marking, okay? Because I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do the pre-test. Can I get help with this? How do I do this? Not an assessment. This is the practice. You must do at least A. You must do at least A. If A, you get 100%, the whole page. No, no. Graph A. If you get all of A, Grayson, no need to do B. If you still need more practice, there's B. I will be checking Tuesday. And yes, it's a smidgen of homework. A tiny little morsel of homework.